I love this piece. In fact, I think it was the first bit of classical music that I ever heard. Ah, yes, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. It's got the best start to any piece of music ever. Dum, 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 dum! <laughs> That's brilliant. But it's also the string instruments. This piece uses them so well. They just bring a real feeling to a piece of music. But they play such different sounds as well. You know what, Fran? I think it's about time we had a proper look at the string section. Let's do it. OK, so this might be a piano, but it is actually also a string instrument. If we look inside, you can see that there are strings of different lengths and thicknesses. At this end, the strings are really thick. And as we go along, the strings get thinner and thinner. When you press a piano key, a small hammer hits one of the strings, making it vibrate. As it vibrates, it moves the air particles around it, which vibrates the ones next to them and the ones next to them. You've formed a sound wave. When that sound wave reaches your ear, you hear a note. And the note you hear depends on the string that's been hit. You can see here the hammer is hitting really thick strings. And so it makes notes that have a low pitch. But if Greg presses keys at this end, the hammer hits thin strings and they make high pitch notes. <laughs> so that is a piano and you play a piano with keys. But what about other string instruments? Well, a guitar works by either plucking the strings like this or strumming them like this. Lovely. Just like this sitar. The sitar, which is popular in Indian classical music, has a lot of strings. The exact number varies from instrument to instrument and musician to musician. This one has six on top and nine on the bottom. And you play it a little bit like this. That's good. Good face while you're playing as well. And then there's the cello, which can be plucked like the guitar or it can be played by rubbing a bow against the strings, like this. Oh, that's some beautiful playing, Fran. The thing is, we can't actually see what's going on because it's all happening too fast. So let's use our super slow-mo camera and have a look at those vibrations in action. The cello is sort of the violin's big brother, and you can see that the string is moving from side to side. It's actually vibrating really, really quickly. And what it's doing is making the air particles close to it vibrate too, making those sound waves. Different types of string behave in different ways. The thickness of a string is really important. Thin strings vibrate quickly. This means they make a note with a high pitch, and thick strings vibrate more slowly, and they make a lower pitch note just like we saw on the piano. The length of a string is very important too. This is my mini harp. It's a string instrument and it goes from long strings right down to short strings, just like the piano. Long strings contain more stuff, more matter than shorter strings. And the more stuff something is made of, the longer it takes to speed up and slow down. So long strings vibrate more slowly than short strings. If I choose two strings, the same thickness, but different lengths. So these two here, let's have a listen. This is the longer one. And this is the shorter one. The shorter one makes a slightly higher pitch note. Ah, but also the tighter the string is, the higher the note it makes. So on this violin, if I pluck this string, then listen to the sound it makes. But if I turn this peg to tighten the string, the pitch should go higher and higher, like this. So, the pitch of a note depends on three different things. The thickness of the string, its length, and how tightly it's pulled. Thickness, length of the string, and how tight it is. Mm -hmm. Got it. But I do want to show you this. Uh, take this stretchy cord, stretch it nice and tight, and twang it doesn't really make much of a musical instrument, does it? Although it does make a sound, it's just not loud enough. Now, what we need to do is find a way of making the sound louder. Yes, we need to amplify it. Right, are you sitting comfortably? I'll begin. To make a violin, we need something called a sound box. 
It's often the largest part of a string instrument and it's made of a material that vibrates easily. The sound box of a violin is made from wood and the key thing is the box contains air that can vibrate too and amplify the sound. A small wooden piece called a bridge sits on top of the sound box. Next comes the fingerboard, which is where a violinist's fingers press down on the strings, which go from the sound box over the bridge and up the fingerboard where they're connected to the pegs. When you run a bow over a string, the string vibrates, the bridge vibrates, the sound box vibrates, the air in the sound box vibrates, all of which makes larger and more powerful sound waves that are much easier to hear. And remember, larger vibrations make louder sounds. Lots of things can be used as sound boxes. We've made this double bass from a metal bin, a piece of wood and some bungee cord. The bin's been carefully cleaned and everything's been emptied out so there's no rubbish left inside. Greg, I thought you'd thrown him out. Sorry. Uh, where was I? Right, so we've got our bungee cords which are stretched across the opening of our sound box and I've got this wooden spatula here which is acting as a bridge. And we've got three different strings. They're the same thickness and the same length. But the bottom one isn't very tight. The middle one is a little bit tighter and the top one is even tighter still. So each one of them will make a different note. Like this. Perfect. Now, as we saw on the harp, long strings make lower notes than short strings. We use that idea to play instruments like the violin and the guitar. And we use our fingers to press down on the strings to make them longer or shorter. So let's have a look. This is long as it gets shorter. This is called stopping the string. Now, as we've seen, one of the best ways of finding out how string instruments work is just to make your own. And this is how to make your very own guitar. Great. What you need is a cardboard box and you just cut a hole in the top of it like this. Then, thank you, you get some elastic bands, cut them and thread them through onto one side of your hole and tie a knot so they keep in place. And finally, nice work, thread them through to the other side of the hole and then put some plastic or wood tubes there to act as your bridge and make sure they're nice and tight. Put a cardboard tube on the end to make a neck and there you have it. A completed homemade guitar. Oh yeah. You can even make a guitar shaped template so it looks even more like a guitar. Now I think we should put our homemade guitars to the test with another blast of the fifth symphony. Roll over Beethoven. <laughs>